problem is that I was always coming too late, mm -hmm. too late to the party. So I say, hey, yeah. you need to change this, or you could do that better, or let's yeah. improve that. And they say, but no, but this is, we already decided a month ago, yeah. this is fixed. Mm. So I was like, oh, can I come earlier on the next project so we can together find those good solutions when there is mm. still the flexibility? The users, the flexibility of parametric design with the quality of BIM, traditional architects who are not interested in learning too many new softwares. I'm half French, half Norwegian. I grew up in both countries, living half and half. And then at the age of 20, uh, I was not sure if I was too French or too Norwegian. So I went to Japan, ah, yeah. mm -hmm. where I lived six years and I studied okay. architecture. And then after being afraid of becoming Japanese, I left and I went to London for my master's okay. degrees. Okay. Uh, focused on sustainable design, environmental okay. design. And mm -hmm. now I live in Norway. Okay. Um, Great. I also gained my, most of my architectural experience. And uh, before to create uh, Spatio, uh, so you are the CEO of uh, Spatio with uh, three co-founders, you, you say to me? Yes. And uh, before to create Spatio, you work on, uh, in architectural design uh, studio in Norway, for example? Yes. I worked in... Um... My last employer was a large architecture office of Scandinavia. Uh, mm -hmm. So we had offices in Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. Mm -hmm. And my role in that office was, uh, I was working in a team of four and five uh, engineers. And we were doing the follow-up of all the projects we had in the company. The follow-up of uh, the quality of the project, okay. the sustainability part of the project that will mm -hmm. say, Daylight analysis, thermal comfort, energy, wind, ventilation, and all of the engineering. And does this experience uh, in your in the studio uh, give you the idea uh, of creating Spatio? Does it uh, bring you the? Did you identify the need for such a tool inside this uh, studio or not? Yes, um, and it's also where I met Stian and Andre, the two other co-founders, and. Um, while I was working with the sustainability team, like I mentioned, most I discovered that most of the problem in doing my job was mm -hmm. actually to transfer the information from the ARCHICAD model or the Revit model of the architect into the different software I used to do for analysis. And I was not very good in BIM in the beginning mm -hmm. because I did not learn at school. Okay. So then I met Stian in the office. He was working on a, in another office. Mm -hmm. And he was the BIM manager of the whole country for our office. Mm -hmm. so he told me how to navigate into those BIM tools and extract the data I needed. And uh, we created a lot of value, a lot of cool scripts using Grasshopper uh, to speed up the design and the analysis process. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I met Andre Agui mm -hmm. in a Graphisoft masterclass in Budapest. Oh, okay. and, and I was very surprised by the quality of the job he has of the things he had shown on LinkedIn and social media. Okay. So I wanted to work with him. So I recruited him. I asked my manager, I need this guy. And then he joined the same office as well. Okay. And he is actually behind the main uh, brain behind Spacio. Okay. So it was his idea and Spacio already existed in uh, Grasshopper and then it existed in Python, in, Comp in Rhino. And... Uh, and uh, together we we shaped it into the way it is today, and we took my my uh, passion for sustainability also, uh, as you, and uh, we also s discovered that the web uh, uh, is now becoming very powerful, so we can actually make a very good app uh -huh. on the browser. And we are, you are going to demo uh, uh, Spatio in a few minutes, but just to so people have a good idea of. Of what is Spatio? Can you sum up the idea you uh, why you created Spatio and what it does uh, for? for yeah. So I mentioned the problem of transferring information from the BIM model to the different analysis platform, and we also saw the problem in our office about the architect literacy. Literacy means what can. What do people know? What language do they speak? Uh, we all speak a language like this, but do we speak the BIM language? Do we speak the programming language? And mm -hmm, so on. Mm -hmm. And even, for example, in our office, we were 
grasshopper uh, experts, uh, super okay. users. So we had already ways to speed up the early phase and the exploration of the, the potential of a plot. Mm -hmm. um, we did that using those parametric design tools. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not everyone that can use those tools. And mm -hmm. it's not everyone who want to use those tools. Mm -hmm. But we saw the need to make the to give to the users the flexibility of parametric design okay. with the quality of BIM mm -hmm. um, to traditional architects who are not interested in learning too many new softwares. So it was really uh, to avoid the different pain points that we experienced ourselves and that we saw our colleagues were experiencing because BIM tools are not very good in early phase and the Rhino, Grasshopper or SketchUp tools are good for the shape, but they don't give you information. Mm. So we saw a missing spot in the value chain of the architecture. Can we have something good with parametric, but with the quality of BIM? Mm. And we try to make that spatial. So if I understand, uh, you focus more on the early stage? When we start the project, we want to define the main shape of uh, the building, and uh, and but at the same time, you link it with some uh, uh, analysis tool uh, yeah. about therma, uh, thermic or acoustic. I don't know many uh, many metrics. So so we have a vision, and our vision is to um, provide a tool that solves everything from the first sketch, so super, super early, the very mm -hmm. beginning, okay. until the building permit. That will mean the end of the pre-project. And for a building permit, you usually need a BIM model with the quality of uh, the 3D, so it means, and the information. So you need the wall thickness, you need slabs, mm -hmm. windows, roofs, mm -hmm. structure is good to have a hint of. Um, and only a shoe box, as we call them, a simple volume mm -hmm. is not good enough. This is too mm -hmm. earlier. So that's our vision from okay. the early phase to building permits. But we have to start from the beginning. So we are starting with the early phase. And mm -hmm. slowly, as we build Spatio, we will go towards that um, building permit phase. Okay. This is why in Spatio, you see already today facades, windows, slabs, and so on, because we are building BIM elements. And uh, yeah, just uh, to terminate with this uh, abstract description, we are going to see the actual software. But I think the idea is that uh, we uh, evaluate the performance of the building at very early stage is it is quite quite innovative, no? Don't you think? I, I think most people do it later in the design stage. Yes, and that's something that I show on my uh, slides in uh, my presentations very often. Is that yeah. I was myself the engineer consultant telling about the thermal comfort, the daylight, or other aspects of the project. And my problem is that I was always coming too late, mm -hmm. too late to the party. So I say, hey, you need to change this, or you could do that better, or let's yeah. improve that. And they say, but no, but this is, we already decided a month ago, this is fixed. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, can I come earlier on the next project so we can together find those good solutions when there is mm. still the flexibility? So that's that's a known pro pro problem. It's very linear. Value creation is linear, and mm -hmm. that's mainly because of the budget and the time, money and time. Um, because even, for example, a competition, we know that most architects, they lose money on a competition because you yeah. have a budget, but you never respect it right and and also from my education and from my uh, what we do in sustainable environmental design we try to think holistic and holistic mm -hmm. means that you look at the same time at different parameters okay. but what i said is that it is not it is linear so you cannot look at the same time because you get more time you get money you get the expertise one after the other so what we're trying to do is actually to bring all those questions and answers earlier on at the same time so we can have this holistic design approach. It's very interesting because uh, we uh, in, we interviewed uh, André, uh, so I think two or three years ago on this channel. I, I, will, li I will leave the, the link in the description. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, at the time, the, the channel was focused on agility in the domain of uh, AOC. 
And uh, it's exactly what you, by, by bringing the holistic view at the early stage of the project, it's one of the main aspects of agility is uh, uh, the, the fact that you, uh, for example, uh, invite all uh, stakeholders, uh, be it uh, constructors, uh, engineers yeah. or architects yeah. at the beginning. So they give their viewpoint at the, at the moment where it, it is possible to do a change. So it's exactly uh, what you said. And yes, and most uh, our clients and users, uh, this is the value they really see most and foremost, is oh. it that people can have a discussion with Spatio being just a, a medium. Okay. We are interested in creating a great product, of course, but we do that so people can communicate better, so the oh. design of the and the project can be better. And people are very happy to have something that is there Spatio, the models, the Allen analysis, and mm -hmm. it's easy for people to make some change to have those conversations. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. So I'm quite curious about seeing the real product. So can you share your screen, uh, perhaps? Yes. To, to make so a... I will get, uh, tell a few things. Uh, so first of all, we are still under development, and we have not fulfilled the full of the vision yet. So mm -hmm. you will see uh, what we have today, mm -hmm. and what is available to the users and and i will also discuss maybe we can talk about that um, okay great what is the missing features what is the roadmap and what is the future great great so share screen window okay. and so here i am on my uh, project dashboard in spatio uh, mm -hmm. And I'm going to create a new project and I uh, will just rename it. And the first thing we prompt in Spatio is to, is to set up uh, a project location. Where is your project? Do you have any place in particular you would like to go to? Or should we just use Oslo or someplace I know well? Mm, no idea. Choose what you, you prefer. Yeah. Or maybe I was in, uh, in uh, Dublin uh, last weekend. So maybe Dublin, if you, if you know it, or Oslo as you want. I'm I'm familiar with the uh, with okay, okay. Actually, I have a plot that I use for webinars or my onboardings. Okay, great. Which is here in central Oslo, close to the new built opera house. Ah, yeah, I know this one. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice opera, by the way. Yeah, uh, and here we have um, because we focus on interoperability. It's what we are trying to solve because it was my problem as an architect. Mm -hmm. We have to set up the right coordinate system. So when you do that, you can export and export files and they will all be on the right location with the right origo. Everyone mm -hmm. working with BIM knows. Yeah, the, the problem of uh, the 0 .0 .0 uh, <laughs> 0 0.0.0. Where is it? And then um, we support, of course, import and export of various file formats, but mm -hmm. we also have a connection to uh, OpenStreetMap to get for free some data for the terrain, the buildings, and the streets. And we can choose to have this or to take it later. But let's take it. And you will see that within a few seconds, pick, we have the map downloaded. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have here a square kilometer with a master scene. And within this master scene, there is different assets, as we call them. And now is the assets fetched from OpenStreetMap. Mm -hmm. um, if the Screen is too small. I will uh, zoom in a little bit like this, the UI. Okay. Um, so we try to keep the user interface very slick and minimal and um, use the way we sort data to bring you information at the right time. Mm -hmm. We don't like menus and then under menus and then hidden menus. Yeah. So we have a toolbar on the left with the different sketches within that same project, a statistic panel, different uh, analysis here, more to come, a property panel that I can discuss briefly, a mm -hmm. toolbar on the bottom that will show, um, that will increase also in the future with additional tools, and a toolbar on the right to go to 2D, 3D, to zoom, different camera views, you can improve the graphics over here. Okay. Maybe you can do it. This. I think this is a... Uh... Online uh, tool by difference with uh, traditional uh, BIM software uh, improve a lot the UI and uh, I think it's a great benefit uh, that you can provide. So I think UI is quite important for new software, collaborative software like that. And for architects, the user experience and the design and all of those soft qualities are very important for mm -hmm. us because we work visually also. 
Um, but one thing we can have, for example, we have different uh, way to show the information that we have. So for example, the terrain, we have some basic analysis. What is the slope, the elevation? Mm -hmm. uh, we have some basic images from uh, OpenStreetMap. So we can, here we see the site that I was mentioning. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have the map view, which is more uh, traditional, like this, um, and so on. I usually like this uh, view to sketch on my plot if I don't have a plot uh, boundary. This is, for example, the plot boundary we often got asked, uh, can we get this information? Well, it depends on the country if it's uh, private or public information. Hmm. In a way, it's private, so we don't have it. But you can always import, for example, uh, various file formats and set okay. up. But I will go quick into what we can do here. So I will remove some of those existing buildings that are here from before. So, uh, ah, yeah, it's the building that you added manually. It's not the building of the context. Those are just the building from the context. Ah, uh, okay. So there was can... two small boxes on this plot. I delete them. And now I will also uh, go to plot, and I will first define a plot. Because we explain it's in different places also, how is the data structure in Spatio, and how, why is Spatio so efficient? Hmm. It's because of the way we sort the data and in a topological manner. A topology means there is a relationship and mm -hmm. we call it a parent-children relationship. Okay. So a plot is a, an object that can contain different objects. A plot okay. can contain buildings. Mm -hmm. Building can contain stories. Mm -hmm. Stories can contain space. Space okay. can contain walls and apertures, windows and so on. Okay. So we can create buildings without a plot, but it's good to make one. And once we do it, we can change some setbacks. So I will say we won't build close to here. We'll make some green area. We can generate some building. And as we click, uh, we get some proposals. This functionality about parametric or generative design is uh, a little bit limited today. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a great feedback from the users and we also have uh, ourselves different um, features that we would like to implement. Some, for example, give up parametric controls. Uh, if you want to step toward the south, if you want to select a street and make it more dense toward the street and so on. Mm -hmm. But the, the standard workflow is to generate uh, already made building or is to draw uh, some shape uh, manually and uh, create your own? Uh... Good question. Yeah. So um, we, with the generative aspect that we are showing here, the main goal is to speed up the inspiration mm. of the user. For example, already from here, I can start, of course, changing the stories. I can say, okay, this one higher up. Actually, this small building here, we can go away. This facade here, I will push like this. Oh can push mm. this one as well. So it's really to, to speed up the process, to test different things. And then you can say, okay, do I want it here? This one, do I want it here? And then we can save the design. We can create a new sketch and we can say, no, maybe let's try something else. Um, we can change some settings about the part, the building width and so on. So so once you, you created uh, an option and after you modify it, you, you still have access to the parameter to modify it uh, automatically or, or once you start to modify manually, it's uh, just a manual uh, work? No, I can always like change manually, but if I click on a new design, I lose it, but okay. I can save it. And then it shows here on the right as a small card. Then I can create different things. Again, changing this and I can save it as well. And then I can come back to this version. Ah, okay. So it's more like a starter. So uh, so it's definitely a starter. Yeah. And some some architects ask us, but can I put this limitation? Can I put this limitation and so on? So we are going to put more features into that. Mm -hmm. But the goal is not to have the computer solve the project for you. Yeah, yeah. Really, because the architects have so much knowledge. This is a kickstart for you to to save some time. But you can also start from scratch, for example go directly into the building, choose a way to design the building. So we can just take a rectangle, you go here, you can input some precise measurement. Let's say it's going to be 18 by 28. Look, enter, enter, and you have a building. 
And from here, we could say, okay, let's cut it in two. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we can reduce the floors on this part. And then maybe I push back in by minus eight meters. And you can also make the buildings this way. Uh, we can make the buildings with a center line. So uh, we can do like uh, this and this and here, and we have a simple block. Uh, and we have all the copy, move, and uh, different ways to interact with the building and, and so on. Right. Um, I think it uh, answers uh, some of the question I had uh, when I tested Spatio man, uh, myself. When mm -hmm. I tested it, I created a building like you did with the generation. And I was thinking that the building was going to be exactly that with exactly the same balcony and the same window. And I was thinking, but what can I do with that? So you answered my question. It's more uh, the building is not uh, to be thought as a definitive uh, final building, but oh. more as an example. Exactly. And uh, also about, so we, we saw the display mode for the terrain, looking at the default map, the slope and so on. Uh, we have also have the different ways to represent the building because mm -hmm. a building can be many things depend of, depending on the stage and the conversation you want to have. So it can be represented as the categories. Let's say this category here, uh, the first floor, it will be a commercial space. And then uh, this top floor will be an office space. Then we can look in the statistics, the breaking down of the mm. uh, square meters and so on. Buildings can be represented as tags. We use tags in architecture. A tag is just an attribute. For example, I want mm. to say this is tag one or tag two, and you can rename them. And tag can be a construction step. It can be a different client. It can be whatever you want. We also have types of so different apartment types. We can discuss this later. And communication. Uh, what is the communication uh, access to this building? Mm -hmm. And we are creating more modes of this coming uh, soon. Okay. Uh, and uh, another aspect that I understood is that uh, very, very quickly, uh, the, the building is a building. So it has some window, it has some uh, slab, everything. Uh, but uh, it's not like an abstract shape. Uh, so this is about what I'm showing now, the level of detail. And of course, architect, we always have this conversation. If you show this to uh, your client, he will think, oh, this is the final design. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and here we start the, the problems. Mm -hmm. So you can always represent it in lower, lower level. Okay. Of so if you want to work with a shape like this, more like a volume, and of course, change maybe some colors of the volume, you can, you can work with the volume as well. Okay, okay. Um, and then, um, but you can also customize to your building a little bit more. So if we go back to the default, for example, the here, so we have some layers, for example, you can choose to preview the facades or not the roofs. We have some course placement, which is automated. And this is mostly to have more accurate, um, gross net uh, area. We are providing some features about cores. You can, soon you can move them around. For now, you can have some settings in the properties. This is all the properties. And this menu is also responsive to what you click. So for example, if I click on the core, it mm. takes me to the core. Uh, if I click on a space, it takes me to a space. If I click the plot, it gives me all the, the plot properties, but also the sub elements, which mm. means properties of the buildings inside the plot. Hmm. Um, and I can show you how this, this property panel and this topological structure works because it's very powerful. So I will delete my buildings. I create those uh, here. I'll just be happy with those. And okay. I will create another plot over here just to have a second one to show you how the attributes uh, works. So let's say I don't select anything. So now on my properties, it says I'm on the project level. I'm not selecting anything. It means that if I now give a property, let's say the roofs, we want to change the roofs to a green roof. Then all the um, buildings of the project will get the roof. We are giving this property to the project. But if I select a plot and I go back to roof and I change this to gable, all those buildings 
get these properties, but mm -hmm. we see that the others do not get it. That's the smart structure that we have created. If you give an information on this level of the data structure, it will not be overridden. And if you give mm -hmm. it... Yeah, yeah, very smart uh, architecture. And it's, it makes you... Uh, with this, you can do very uh, fast global change or local change, for example. So if, uh, if I understood well, uh, one of your, your building of the, the first plot, if you select it, you select the building, but not the plot. And after you select the roof of the building, you, you could customize... Uh, yeah. Uh, also, only part of the, this plot. Uh, yeah. Building. So if I select this building now and I go to aperture, uh, I can make them uh, larger. So, so you can fit as you need. Uh, yeah, exactly. I can select the plot and now change the aperture also to smaller. It will change everything, but not this one because this one I gave it already a specific. Okay. Great, great. And you can do the same with the space if you go to the category. So you can say, okay, this plot will have a different category or and so on. So, so this is for example the strength of the property system. And then we also have some analysis because this is also my passion and my role in the team. Mm -hmm. So we have the Stian, which is our CTO. Mm -hmm. He's a BIM uh, guru, we call it, and also okay. a little bit of a magician. Uh, he can code and find solutions for every problem. He doesn't think there is anything impossible. Mm -hmm. And it's really good to have Stian because Andre and myself, we are a little bit dreamers. And he's someone which is, which is very pragmatic. So okay. he says, okay, you have dreams, let's make it for real. And Andre is working with the look of Spatio, the features, the architecture side, and my work is mostly on the sustainability and the mm -hmm. performance. Okay. So we have made some basic analysis available today. For example, the daylight potential. You can assess uh, quickly the amount of sky light that falls onto the design mm -hmm. that has a correct correlation with the interior, internal daylight performance. Okay. So you can change the building height and see how this will improve. So for example, if I make this building too high, it's going to get pretty dark inside here. We can filter the results. What is good? There will be no problem here. We don't have to focus. Medium means let's be careful with the balconies. Let's be careful not having the facades inset. Let's be careful not having rooms which are perpendicular and deep. And the dark area here, there is very little light. So we won't be able to meet any daylight requirements. So we can place a different programming uh, in, inside. Okay. We also have a way to check for 45 angle check, which is a good room of thumb to see, to see if you have a lot of sky access or not. We have been working on views uh, as well, where you can set uh, different view types. You can also say how much do i see of the terrain how much do i see of the water of the sky I mean, it's very detailed uh, analysis you can, i think you can place some sensors it will be a place of interest so for example if i place a sensor there we have our small cathedral ah. so there i'm putting a small sensor on top of it here and uh, now we can see hmm. uh, Yes, because the, for example, this type of analysis, uh, it's so complicated to do by hand that uh, nobody really do it with this level of, of precision, I think, in a in real project no, without your tool. Yes. So here we see all the apartments that have a view to the bell of the church, for example. Mm. If that's a, a feature you want to, to increase, you can also place some sensors in a park or different places. And as you sketch, you can see, okay, will this apartment see the church? Those two floors will see the church. Mm. Uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, do you have some uh, some calculation about uh, carbon emission? It's uh, a question some people ask me. Yes, a lot. So carbon emission, uh, you have to know that more than sixty percent, seventy percent of the carbon in a building, it's mm -hmm. in the structure. Okay. And to do a proper proper estimate, you need um, to dimension the structure correctly. You need to know if your slab is going to be 25, 28, 30 centimeters, okay. your facades, your pillars. Mm. So we are working um, to 
also automate the structural design of the building I, uh, for different components. For example, if you want lightweight timber, massive timber, concrete mm -hmm. and steel. And uh, we are working with our partners. Uh, we have two big partners. One is called Velux, mm -hmm. the roof window. Yes, yes. They are actually Danish and they also have a team of engineers that helps us uh, about sustainability in Spacio. And there is another firm called AKT2, which is a consulting firm uh, for buildings. And together we are thinking, how do we automate and how do we create this structure in Spacio? We're also looking at the carbon and the LC and there is different phases and so on. So together we are creating the user experience and it's under development. Okay. And it won't be ready this year. But okay. Maybe. And uh, I, I don't want to forget to ask you the question. Maybe it's too, too early, but uh, as in, in, in this channel, we focus on AI and artificial intelligence. Uh, so currently you, you show me a few, a few calculations, but uh, do you think or do you plan to have some uh, features that uh, use AI uh, for, uh, yeah. Yeah, for Spatio? So what is AI is the first question. Uh, what have we have seen until now? There is no, the AI is in algorithm, which are functional algorithm. Mm -hmm. So it can be understood as AI, but more traditional AI is uh, machine learning and yeah. the process of training a model and then to predict something. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have some features which are not there yet to the users. It will come in September. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's about predicting the daylight uh, inside the room. Mm -hmm. with AI. We also have a new feature which is under development soon ready, probably September, there will be a first version for the prediction of energy. Mm -hmm. This we are training models, so this, this will be AI. And there the workflow will be more like there will be every buildings will be divided into different zones and we will predict the energy consumption for each zone, and mm. then we will have the result for every building and for the wall project. That once, as you sketch and change the height and the shape, the orientation of the building, you will have in a panel like here, the energy use. And so you're, as a designer, you can change the shape and reduce the energy. And, and this calculation uh, cannot, uh, cannot, do, cannot be done with a traditional algor algorithm? So the daylight part cannot be done. Uh, you need proper software to do that. Mm -hmm. And that will mean if we want a software to do that and not AI, we need an, a server mm -hmm. running somewhere in Europe. Okay. And we need to send your model to the server. That may take one second. We need the server to do the analysis and traditional analysis can take minutes, maybe hours. Mm -hmm. And then we need the model. So it won't give you an iterative workflow like we are here where you click and it updates okay it I keep it here in the same place to not share your information and uh to speed up and, and we, we could do uh without ai but ai makes it faster okay yeah and so it uh give me another question uh as you said that uh, uh your data is not shared with the server it means that currently uh, in Spatio, uh, you are not using a server to, to store the, the user modification? Or? So everything we are doing here, it's using the strength of my laptop that we are using. And the only thing that goes out of the laptop is uh, when you see this changing, look at here, it's saved now in uh, this minute, okay. make a modification, it saves. So okay. every click, Spatio save your project. So okay. if you close the internet or you close your computer, you're always safe. Mm. This is the only connection between Spatio and outside. Also, so, when you log in, of course, to check if it's uh, Sebastian and not Peter. But, but the, data, the data itself, it's, uh, it's saved in, uh, in a server or locally? Yeah. So here, when it saves, it goes to our servers okay. and it saves. And the only thing that is saved is not even the full project. It's uh, This is all generative. So we're not saving like in a, a normal 3D file, mm, a yeah. 3D mesh. We are basically, can I say this? It's We're actually just saving some parameters. For example, the outline mm. is just based off points. 
and then we have parameters like how many floors. And okay. when you load the project, we actually rebuild it. A bit like a grasshopper that you described at the beginning, but uh, with uh, probably a different approach, but uh, something similar. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so that's why it's uh, fast. Uh, I don't know how good the video recording and over from Norway to France is, but here on my screen, it's 60 FPS minimum. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I try it also. It's uh, pretty fast, I think, pretty fluid. So that's uh, important. Uh, this is also the choice that we make in building the application. We are always thinking about the user experience. Mm -hmm. And we don't want people to wait too long. I, myself as an architect, I wanted analysis to be fast so I can mm -hmm. test and design and also learn from uh, using the tool because I can see the consequence of my choice right away. But we mentioned a little bit uh, analysis, uh, more analysis using AI, which are coming as well, will be thermal comfort. So mm -hmm. a way to look inside the building inside the different rooms and apartments and have prediction on the comfort. So if you have too big windows, there will be too much sun on summer. Do mm. you need different glass? Do you need balconies to shade? Mm. Um, we are, will have the uh, our workflow with natural ventilation. So for example, how is effective the natural ventilation in your country? We will develop things with future climate scenario because we know that it's getting hotter and hotter in around the Mediterranean Sea, for example. Okay. So, so designers can make buildings which are good also for the future when we have this climate change. I think we, we already understand quite a lot of uh, the how spatial work, but now I want just to zoom out a little bit to understand how spatial can work with the other software. Because when you are an architect, generally, you currently most of architects don't use uh, spatio, maybe they use uh, Revit, uh, most of them, other use Arch Archicad. Yep. So, how do you suggest uh, to do? Uh, is there a Already some workflows that you identify in uh, with your clients, the clients that uh, that yeah. already use the spatio. So we have seen different workflows. Uh, some people today use only Revit or only Archicad from beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. For those people, it's great to have a tool like Spatio uh, because they can do a more wide exploratory testing. Mm -hmm. workflow with Spatio that they cannot do with uh, BIM. Some architects are using uh, SketchUp or Rhino and no matter what the workflow is today, we have to be part of an ecosystem. Yeah. And we don't want to be a silo. We want to be open. Okay. So we have imports for DXF, which is basically the open format of DWG. CAD, so if you want 2D or 3D CAD. Mm -hmm. uh, OBJ is a simple mesh format if you come from SketchUp. 3DS, it's also mesh. And we have native Rhino. Mm -hmm. You can upload images. In no way, if you buy cadastral data, mm -hmm. it's from Nurkart, so you can import directly a zip file and so on. We will also support IFC imports very soon, uh, not for importing an existing project, but in for importing a a setup at the start of the project. Okay. But to export, uh, we can also export different screenshots, uh, Excels uh, with all the data of the project. We can export back to native Rhino, OBJ, but also IFC. And okay. when we export to IFC from Spatio, everything is classified as BIM uh, elements. So this is what we see here. Uh, so we have IFC slabs, we have IFC roof, IFC walls, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so on. So all the project is properly classified. So you get a real BIM model exactly like this mm -hmm. within a, a second. It goes super fast to do, export. You can choose what do you want to export. Export and pack 7 megabytes, a new file. And... Uh, and you just have to assign your libraries or your families in Revit and you're good to go. So that's very good. So you can start in Spatio. As we've seen, we give you some open data. You can right. import data. You can create a project, a proposal. And then you go to IFC and you do more detailing work. In the future, we would like to delay when you go out of Spatio, right? Because now we don't offer 
all the tools. So you need to go to BIM mm. in one point in time, but in the future, we would like to delay when do you go out of Spatio, of course. Okay. And maybe, uh, well, uh, I see that a bit uh, very smart uh, SketchUp because you have the flexibility of modifications that we have in, in SketchUp, for example. Uh, but at the same time, you have all the the, cat uh, the categories of beam. Uh, we are talking about a building with some floor and so on. And also, there is something that I think is quite difficult in uh, in Revit or your uh, AS AEC uh, tool, which is the versioning to be able to do several versions of a building. And uh, maybe you could say, okay, the definitive building is in uh, Revit, and we are going to develop it. Uh, uh, progressively, but at the same time, we do some uh, some alternatives, some options, and so on uh, in Spatio, maybe. Exactly. We are thinking different ways to be more interoperable. So with Graphisoft, we have been discussing uh, Archicad Spatio connection. We are building a Grasshopper connection and different ways to exchange data more easily. But you said something interesting about versioning. For example, now I just created, as we were talking, a duplicate of the sketch, and I changed one, uh, two buildings. So I can go back to the previous, and I can go back to the new one, but I can also compare them. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I can compare them maybe here. Okay. No, uh, to compare, and I think I can go, just go back to the dashboard. And uh, we see the demo project. I can go to explore sketch and we have the two sketch that I made and we can also compare them. And that will say, for example, I can take this one as a reference and then we can say, oh, this one is less mm. here. I can click this one. So you can have many multiple sketches and when you have to communicate to your client, you can have them here side by side and say, Okay, this one was good for this and that, and this one is better for this and that. And then you can go inside and check. Okay. And um, uh, you, you also said that uh, for you, Spatio is a way to communicate around the project. So do you, have, uh, do, do you propose some communication uh, ways directly in Spatio, for example, uh, geolocalize uh, in the building, or, or do we still need to communicate outside of it? You still need to communicate outside. I've been on a conference for a municipality in the west of Norway, in the beautiful fjords, uh, cool. in June. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there they were using some GIS platform to have the citizens of the small town to, inside a 3D tool, put a pin with, uh, here, my name is uh, John, and mm. I think uh, this park is really great. Let's keep the park. And mm. then there is a uh, Simon that says, hey, uh, here it's not safe. I'm afraid for the cars because it's not. A... We are thinking maybe building something like this or mm. different ways. Uh, but we anyway are very open to create different functionalities because we have a vision. But of course, we take the feedback because we build this for you for everyone mm. yeah i think this could be quite handy and uh something you didn't talk about also is the the possibility to share the the design outside of your organization to your client for example yeah we don't have this yet but we are designing a view mode uh, that will come later this year where you will be able to just share a url okay, uh, okay. so then anyone can view but not click and change because to me, the two features are kind of related because you could imagine a view mode, you share to your client, your client makes some uh, some review, say, okay, this I like, this maybe not, and so on. And, and then you could have a, a real uh, review tool, 3D review tool with yeah. other people, I think it could be really But what we have experienced is that it's so fast to, sh if you were my client and I was oh. Mr. Architect, you mm -hmm. would say, oh, but no, uh, I like this, but that's too... We can do the change live yeah, yeah. Mm. and it's so fast. So actually we've seen that very often we can just have a, a meeting okay. and you tell me what you want to change and I change it. And because I don't need one week or one afternoon to fix my Excel's, my report, okay. we have everything here. We can go to the plot that is this plot here. We can find this building. Right, it's this one. We can go inside, we can see every story, how big it is. I can select this story. I can now change, uh, you know, we have all the information here. I can export to Excel and see uh, a summary of all of this. 
So because it's more interactive, we can also do it together. Okay. And uh, finally, for for potential uh, architect who will be potentially interested in uh, in uh, using Spatio, uh, uh, how much does it cost? For example, <laughs> I think it's a question everybody. Uh, I think it's clear on your uh, your pricing page, but uh, just so look. we uh, I don't remember prices uh, exactly. Yeah, uh, around the We are thinking a monthly plan and a yearly plan, okay. and also. Soon, uh, before the end of August, there will be a freemium. Um, okay. So the freemium will be a version that anyone can use okay. with some limited uh, functionalities, like the export will be limited. Okay. And this will be free. And then we have uh, a personal license. So it will be attached to your email. And we will have a team license. And I, the personal license, uh, I think it's something like... 2000 euros okay. uh, for a year and the team plan where four or five people can access within the same organization uh we think it's around 5000 but i will check uh, yeah yeah it's to be precise <laughs> and we often give uh yeah offers and and, so and also we are on youtube so maybe in a few months it will be different so you could uh, check what is uh, the current situation on spatio.ai but uh, yeah the fact you imagine a freemium plan is a, a very nice idea <laughs> because uh, i think in the ALC world it's very it's not so common and uh, till now I already identify hectare, which is uh, has some overlap with what you do, but uh, that have uh, they have a, a freemium plan, mm -hmm. and it's very for me. For example, I am doing some training to architect, and it's very handy just to 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 show the tool to to people, because for people also the feedback that I I got from uh, architects is that often the trial period is quite uh, short. And they are very busy, and in uh, one month is uh, not uh, re generally not enough to decide. And <laughs> I think yeah. the, uh, I, I understand that there is a price because uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work that you put in. But if you could uh, give the functionality to some people also that could not afford to pay, it, it's also a great thing. I think. Yes, because we see a lot of interest. Uh, there is uh, really thousands, hundreds of thousands of architects in all over the world, uh, which are looking for a change. There is a big frustration. We have clients now in more than 35 countries. Our first client was from Hawaii. Okay. And, uh, and it shows that whether you live in Brazil or you live in France or in Singapore, hmm. you want a new tool. You're not, people are not satisfied. Yeah, I think it's uh, interesting that you talk about it because it's, uh, it's uh, broadened a bit the discussion. Uh, I have two questions. One is, uh, do you do you think there is uh, some countries that are more open to change? Do you see some uh, recurring uh, country patterns that... Uh... There are some countries which are already more advanced in BIM. That will be, from my experience, uh, Scandinavia, Germany, mm. Netherlands, those kind of, you know, yeah. those blonde countries with people... Okay. Are you belong to it. <laughs> where people are, uh, where they come incentive from the states and to mm. make change. Okay. And those people who are already working in BIM, they have a little bit to change how the value and the flow is within a project. And often those countries have a little bit more research and development budget, mm. Mm -hmm. and they have people who use parametric design, grasshopper, and so on. So mm. I think those are more easily convinced because they are in a change but i see also architects from uh, countries where they work only in autocad mm. and they want to jump not from autocad to bim but from AutoCAD. Mm, uh, india perhaps uh, even spain or france spain? okay really. right because i i heard that uh, in india bim is too expensive for them and they don't even uh, but maybe it's just uh, japan, is, uh, japan bim is only for projects which are big 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 okay the normal projects it's autocad and yeah. what about france is it not autocad a lot yeah france it's in the middle i think it is there are, there are people that pretend to use beam but they don't really use it to, the, to its full potential and uh, many others that uh, are small very small companies and that uh, that still work in 2d because uh, yeah but the price uh, is also a factor, and for now, we have to be able to uh, survive as a company. Mm. 
And uh, once we have created a better spatial and that we have a good amount of users and a good community, we will really like to drop the price. So you mentioned India, so they can also afford the tool because it's mm. not everyone has the same uh, currency. Yeah. And uh, my last question. Uh, so we said there is a uh, we said that there is a frustration uh, about the current tool. So we uh, to not name it. It's a historical tool, uh, uh, Revit, uh, Archicad, and uh, another. But wh when we look at this tool, yeah, when when you go outside of ARC and after you go back in ARC, it's my case. You are very shocked by the level of uh, quality of the tool. The UI, it is a bit old. Everything is a bit uh, heavy and so on. <laughs> so, and it is not online and collaborative. I think it's uh, the two, the main difference uh, in, in other domain like uh, UX design, development, web development. Many of the tools uh, went to the web and, uh, yeah. and now it's more, uh, the UI is much more uh, sleek, as you said, and uh, it's more collaborative and so on. And currently, there is a trend. You are not the only software that do that. There is a Snaproot, there is a Infornia. There is, a, I think, by the way, I am doing, a, I will do other interview on this channel about this uh, type of software, uh, software. So if you are watching this video and you are interested in the topic, please uh, subscribe and uh, we will have more uh, about this. But how do you, how do you um, position uh, uh, Spatio? By uh, with the competition and uh, and with the historical actor like uh, Autodesk Revit and so on. Uh, how do you see yourself uh, in the next uh, years, for example? <laughs> so in the beginning, or just thinking about what Spastio should be, we were just thinking about our problems mm. as architects mm. and to the people we were talking to. So we were not really thinking. Archicad or Vectorworks or Rhino and mm -hmm. where do we put ourselves? We thought about the problem mm -hmm. and we thought about a solution. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we thought about the users. Um, and like you said, other kind of new tools also have chosen the web. And your question is, is the web the future or how do I see uh, the and so on? But I've talked, for example, to uh, Graphisoft uh, a lot. Okay. And for them, for Graphisoft to make Archicad on the web, they mm. have to start from the beginning, like yeah. in the 60s, because everything is built not for the web, so they yeah. cannot change it. They yeah. have to remake everything. Mm. So I think they will not change because they yeah. cannot. We we start from scratch in 2021. Yes, of course. Like this. And we have already technologies which are new and developing that we can take to leverage uh, that. So, so I think the future is what we make it, and we will. And there is a lot of ch change happening in the web uh, and the graphics. You see now soon there will be a new uh, the web GPU, for example, is soon available for Chrome and most software. Yeah, yeah. That will make Spatio even faster because we, we could talk to the graphic card, to the GPU oh. calculations, and so on. Mm. So I think all the all the industry is moving towards more web based yes, web based uh, solution. And uh, so uh, we will focus on that because we think it gives so. It gives the same performance, but so much more flexibility. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, there is only uh, the whole industry to convince, <laughs> because people are quite conservative in the industry and and they are used to to use uh, des desktop based uh, software. But uh, I think if they figure out that the solution is uh, is more flexible and better, uh, probably they will uh, switch progressively. There is, a, there is a quote we often say between us in the team. And it's uh, what Henry Ford uh, used to say to his employees. It's like, he, he said something like this. Like, people, if you ask what people want, mm -hmm. they want faster horses. Because at the time, there was only yeah. horse in the street, not cars. Yeah. So they don't know what they want. They just want to go from A to B faster. So mm -hmm. a faster horse. No, you can make a car. It's mm -hmm. even better. Well, it's a problem, but they thought it was better. And, and it's the same thing with architect, like with the, with the tools. Should I create a new Archicad? Should I create a connection from Archicad to Grasshopper? Should I? Uh, mm -hmm. Let's rethink the problem.
and try to make a solution which is from 2024 and not from the 60s. Great. Uh, great. Thank you very much, uh, friends. And, uh, and we will uh, keep, uh, I will keep uh, uh, watching the, the, new, the new feature uh, on, uh, about Spatio. Uh, and uh, and uh, I, will, uh, I will try it again to, to explore all the possibilities. Thank you very great. much. Thank you uh, as well, and uh, let's support each other. Uh, we are in a change. We want change, so let's make it ourselves and let's uh, work together for it. So okay. everyone, you can visit spacio.ai, uh, our YouTube channel. We are pretty active on other social medias like uh, LinkedIn, a little bit Instagram. Don't hesitate to email me at france at spacio.ai if you have any questions, and we'll see you soon. Great. I will put all the information in the description of the video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.